Okay, well, welcome everyone. Um, welcome back. It's been a while since we've done one of these and recorded it, so I wanted to welcome folks. And today we wanted to talk about artificial intelligence, AI-generated artwork. Uh, recently, a piece won first place at a state fair fine arts competition in Colorado, and um, been a lot of bit of controversy about it. Artists are upset, and Jack was just mentioning that it's not able to be copyrighted. So why don't we start there with Jack? talking a bit about the copyright and artificial intelligence. Well, the copyright law is pretty straightforward. That you have to produce something by human intellect, by uh, you know, human hand. You know, this goes back to the, uh, the monkey case, you know, where the guy handed the camera to the monkey and the monkey took the picture, which was terrible. I mean, he, it, could have been, it could have been set up a different way um, the same way people who set up camera blinds that automatically photograph things that go by, uh, they <laughs> claim that the setup and, and their direction qualifies for uh, a copyright. It, it's a bit controversial, but the artificial intelligence, if, if, if it's just what that was produced, is uh, right now the copyright office won't won't register a copyright so it's it's basically public domain mm -hmm. even though uh some of these artificial intelligent uh, uh companies are are claiming some copyright it's um mm -hmm. uh, what's the t i have the term because ed greenberg and i are, are going to talk a little bit uh, uh about this it's um uh, it's a claim deed um uh, it, it's something where you claim something you don't know if it's true or not, but just in case it is, this is what you're claiming, and that's basically what declarative the, judgment. Uh, no, it's not declarative judgment. There's another term for it. If you give me a second, I can uh, I can find it on something else. But what I'm also seeing, which makes it, uh, uh, which I think is acceptable, some people are using it just for uh, backgrounds. Um, and they're finding out that that uh, if you use it for a background and you're putting something else in, then you are creating something uh, on your own. Um, it's called uh, quit claim deed, uh, quit quit claim deed, um, and that's what some of the some of the yeah, it's a real estate thing. Exactly, <laughs> it, it goes in real estate where you don't know if this is you know owned or not owned or what it is, but this is a claim that you're making now, um, and. Uh, that's that's basically what these artificial intelligence places are, are doing. I, I saw something real interesting online as, as I'm trying to get uh, more knowledgeable about it. Um, I think I have it on my on my desktop. Let me see. Oh, shoot. Um, John, but it, it is it is an interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, let me see if I can control this on this. John, can I share my screen? Yes, you should be able well, to. How did, this, uh, how did this picture get entered into the competition? If it wasn't. He just entered it. I, I don't think there was anything He entered in the it, and he, I, I believe in his entry, he, he mentioned that it was artificially um, created, but it won first place. I don't know if you, do you see the link over in the chat? You can read about it in there. I, I saw this today and I thought it was interesting. This woman created this in uh, Mid Journey, you know, artificial intelligence. She also created this. And what she did is she combined them all in Photoshop to create this. So she created something else. And what she did with that then is she took this picture and then over processed it and let's see if i can find it it's i may have to play it to uh to get it to go let me just see okay just yeah so that's what she's been doing is she's been using it as backdrops or overlays or things like that now in that case she's creating something on her own she's using it just as you know a, a backdrop or something just the same way you could take a picture of a uh, uh you know a building that's created by an architect and lay claim to it because you're creating something new it definitely is a, a an interesting area 
the thing is, uh, Jeff, just like we saw years ago with cell phones, uh, just starting out, we were listening to people saying, well, they're just crappy little pictures, you know, because they were so small. And we said, just wait for the technology to get better and better. And, and now the technology is, you know, remarkable on that type of stuff. I think we're going to see the same thing with this. I think it's 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 going to put some illustrators out of business at low end. And I think it's going to start affecting photographers, too. Isn't this what Licht is doing or has been doing for years? No, he's 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 taking pictures. He's just over processing them, but they're his pictures. Jack, can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, help me understand here, because um, to the best of my knowledge, a the, an architect's work is copyrighted. Um, we are allowed to photograph it without his or her permission. Uh, not necessarily since 1990, if it's a building before 1990, there's no copyright since I think it's 1990, uh, the architectural drawings can be copyrighted. So the building, uh, could be copyrighted. So there is issues with that. Um, okay. Yeah, I was just checking. I, I had heard that it, I didn't, you know, I, I don't know what source and I couldn't support. So I was just curious if you knew. It depends on what you're doing with the picture, and that's what it always comes down to. If you're doing a skyline, you have no problems. If you're, um, and the example we always give is the Empire State Building, which, which isn't copyrighted, uh, but it is trademarked, but that's another issue uh, that you have to be careful of. But um, if you took a picture of the Empire State Building and put a copy line saying, you are the empire of photographers or something like that, or play on words, then you're trading on their mark. Uh, and that could be an issue. You know, you're using their building um, uh, uh, more than just a, a background or, you know, it's there. Um, you know, it's, it's how it's used becomes the issue. And it has to be very specific. Now, you know, not to get too deep into this part of it, because we're really talking about AI, but uh, the guys who own the Flatiron building in New York were claiming that the building was... Uh, copyrighted and trademarked and that you can't photograph it for commercial purposes at all and of course they, they that didn't have a leg to stand on but they were making life difficult for people for a while and and that's a legal that's a legal tactic sometimes is just to make it difficult it, well, it, it can't the, be copyrighted that's the whole thing with the cypress tree on the 17 miles that's ride another one yeah of uh, uh pebble beach they try they claim well they tried to claim copyright uh, they they claim trademark, but the the sad thing is that the poor tree uh, is so degraded from where it was when it became famous that it's like really sad. Uh, but they have the sign uh, at the overlook that says that the tree is copyrighted. Um, the um, uh, other thing, I believe it was the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame that successfully sued. Um, yes, that's right. Uh, a photographer or a poster making company, um, they defended their copyright of the building and again, uh, against commercial use. And it was a blatant commercial use. Uh, uh, and I, I, I don't remember the final disposition of the case, but in their case, I think they just wanted, they chose a case to help defend their position of ownership, um, kind of like a declaratory judgment, I, I think is the term, uh, although Jack can correct me, to put everybody on notice that if somebody's trying to take advantage of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, that they will, they were litigious. Yeah. No, and that's what the Warhol Foundation did to um, uh, Lynn Goldsmith. It was a declaratory um, suit. You know, she didn't sue them, they sued her. Yeah. Has anyone on this call used uh, this new AI generated artwork to create their images? Not yet, uh, but I've, I've talked with a couple of people. Uh, Mid Journey is one of them. I've signed up for one of the other uh, betas. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> the, there's a couple of points that I'll point out that haven't been pointed out yet is that some of the um, uh, AIs are wholly generated from keyword images 
Um, but some of the AIs, you can upload your image and have the AI manipulate your image based upon keywords. Um, that would be something that I might be interested in doing is, is um, uh, add uh, additions to or modifications of. Um, those of you that are old time <clears throat> uh, Photoshop jockeys, I'm pretty sure John will remember. Um, Kai Krauss used to have a plugin called Convolver, uh, which basically it had a whole bunch of parameter adjustments you could do to an image, but it had a randomized button that could go through and randomly select <laughs> settings. Uh, and I think there were like nearly 20 different uh, parameters that you could manipulate the image. <clears throat> and some of the you know things like posterization and noise and and contrast and <clears throat> some of the results were like really pretty interesting. Most of the results were pure shit, uh, and that's the same thing that I've been seeing with the AI. In fact, there's one guy in on one of my Facebook friends that is doing a daily count on his timeline of how many AI images people have posted and how many people have posted the AI images. Uh, and um, uh, so it is interesting, I think. There are a couple of people whose work has been posted that I find very intriguing. And I don't know whether or not they did the initial generation from their images or just uh, wholly created AI images. Um, but, uh, Tuesday, we had a conversation with, uh, or a week ago Tuesday, we had a conversation with Steve uh, Johnson and Eric is, Eric is here. <laughs> uh, Eric was, I won't say he was beside himself, but he was pretty adamant that he was anti-AI in terms of the image making, at least for him. I, I don't wanna speak for him because he can speak for himself. Uh, and my point of view is it's just another tool set. Um, it's a, uh, uh, an interesting tool set. And I do think uh, it's like any other tool, it can be used for good or evil. Uh, and most of the stuff that I've seen, well, particularly mid journey seems to have, um, the AI seems to have a certain kind of moody, gloomy um, <clears throat> uh, um, aesthetic. Uh, that uh, oftentimes I think is very interesting looking. But yeah, I, I just thought with John, it would be an interesting point because, you know, we're all going to be replaced by machines anyway. And you remember what... Uh, um, speak for yourself. Speak, well, yeah, I am speaking for myself. I know. Um, I'm going to... How do we know that? How do we know that you're not a machine? Well, yeah, I am a deep fake. <clears throat> yeah. I'm, I'm a pure deep fake. I've always thought that about you. Yeah. <laughs> Is that you talking, David? You, yes, you're uh, hiding behind your, your portrait? Um, yes. but mentioned that uh, Stephen and I have already gone to dinner. These are AI-generated um, images of us. We're not really here. We're having most portraits. You appreciate the back of my business card there. I agree, Jeff, though it is it is very dark and moody. I've actually, I thought I was going to try it, and then I realized, you know, this is going to be like, for those of you who remember, KPT Bryce that rendered landscapes. And it, it was very surreal looking and very interesting. There was a certain look to it, and I went down that rabbit hole, in fact, so much so that I left Apple and became product manager for that product. Um, but <laughs> I forgot that. The, the interesting thing was, anyone who tried it just got into it so deeply you would never see them for a few weeks <laughs> and i don't want to repeat that with this it's, it's very tempting to do that it's, it's fascinating um but it does have what jeff said it has a certain look to it that i've seen very few really uplifting images they're all dark and you know there's death and <laughs> redness and devils and all these weird creatures it also doesn't do faces or eyes very well quite yet uh, but it'll get there yeah, it seems that's been the place that they're starting to improve his faces and eyes from what I've heard from other people yeah. using it. Yeah. Um, and then there's things like, is it Remini that you upload your photo to? 
and it tries to fix it up and it has like its own stock images of eyes and the like and replaces parts so if the eyes yeah, are out of focus like in an that. image it finds some in focus eyes and replaces them i was talking to a couple of the meta guys meta creations guys who made bryce and kpt power tools and all that stuff and one of them interface designer was saying something like someone puts an interface on this thing you know because right now it's very i don't know if any of you played with it. it's very rudimentary you have to go through discord to use it it's, it's very, very clunky but it's new um but if someone puts an interface on this thing once it becomes mature well john Nack, a lot of money on it john well, Nack just posted he's a product manager at adobe somebody uh -huh. actually put a front end to a different AI as a Photoshop plugin so that you can actually oh. call up the AI uh, from within Photoshop. Interesting. Is it Dolly? Because wow. there's there's a couple of them out there now. Mid Journey, Dolly, there's one or two others. You don't know, Jeff? <laughs> I'm not sure which one it is. Oh, okay. It's on next blog, I think. I think Petapixel did an article on three of them, and they did the same commands in each one to see how each one handled it differently. Oh, and there is a st stylistic difference between uh, uh, which service you're using. But someone pointed out, though, that it's not going to affect uh, our getting jobs because you have to describe what you want, and none of our um, clients have been able to describe what they want first time around. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said something about um, it's good for a conceptual artist when you're rendering maybe architectural ideas and things like that. And a lot of people are afraid they're going to lose their jobs. I think they might be a little bit panicky right now, but it'll it'll calm down probably. Um, I think illustrators are going to see more. I'm sorry. Yeah. I think illustrators are going to see more of an impact. I, I saw one where they were using it to design a sneaker. Um, I forgot who posted that, but they showed that they just put in some some basic things and then had the computer um, uh, dollop the uh, um, dollop the sneaker and then in the end they just went in and moved a couple of the control points and uh, created a, a brand new sneaker, which you know is fine and easy, but it just means that that's one more person who's at the low end who's probably going to lose their job. I, I'm just worried this is the same thing as as uh, stock photography. When when royalty free came out, it was just intended for the low end of the market, you know, for people that really couldn't afford a photographer and wanted a high end thing and buy cheap pictures. And eventually it just crept up to just include more and more and more and higher end and higher end and just ate up the uh, the industry. But I, I think there's some things like uh, I was talking with my lawyer, medical illustrators. Yeah, this could be something where medical illustrators uh, who, who work very detailed type of things could could see some of this uh, uh, being a tool for them and then maybe eventually overtaking a lot of what they do at the lower end. Does anyone know what the current restrictions on resolution are? Like, what are the pixel dimensions of these things? Yeah, I think yep. it's 2048, I think. That's what I've heard, too, but... <clears throat> This, but a lot of people least, are using gigapixel to resolve. Right, I was going to say this guy that won the competition in Colorado used gigapixel to enlarge it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that woman I was showing, she uses gigapixel too. She says for hers, but it's still very low resolution. I don't. So, think it's so AI is okay if it's doing something useful like gigapixel, but it's terrible when it's <laughs> actually doing something artistic, huh? That's right. <laughs> Jack, you mentioned stock photography. I remember when I first got into commercial photography back in the late 70s, early 80s, uh, there was one person that we know in common uh, who pissed the hell out of an awful lot of uh, assignment photographers uh, by putting a black book ad with a million photographs available. You remember who that is, right? Yeah. Uh, and there was a time where assignment photographers, people that were uh, trying to get paid to shoot assignments, really just hated and rejected the whole concept of stock photography. Um, and yet stock photography was inevitable. I mean, it, you go back to uh, any kind of uh, economic or technological disruption is going to disrupt things. I mean, that's the whole underlying premise 
of something new okay. happening and altering the landscape to the point where um, people that have been, shall we say, overly dependent upon a certain kind of process gets disrupted when that process gets massively or um, um, fundamentally changed. So, uh, yeah, but we look at we... So you broke up there, Stephen. We didn't hear you. Maybe that's why my buggy whip business isn't doing so well. <laughs> well, well, there was also another article that I just read. <clears throat> you remember the um, the church Notre Dame burned down in it, well, mo a lot of it burned up in in uh, in Paris. There has been uh, stone masonry. Uh, there's a school of of medieval stone masonry that <clears throat> the graduates of that school have been hired in mass uh, to help rebuild uh, Notre Dame. And then part of the school is also timber makers where they hand hew timber, which apparently hand hewing timber has a fundamentally different effect on the timber than sawing it. I, I, I wasn't sure what the deal was, but somehow or another, a hand-hewn timber is stronger than a sawn, a sawn uh, timber. And uh, there's some kind of uh, how it affects, Jim's got his hand up. Go ahead, Jim. I read an article about that too. They made that claim about, about the timber. I didn't see anybody actually check that claim. Um, the question to me was, the Notre Dame is a fantastic building, but should it be rebuilt as it was built a thousand years ago, or should it be rebuilt so that it maybe isn't the fire hazard that it, it turned out to be? Well, they can put sprinklers on it now. <laughs> I think as you build how it, how it looks, but maybe the underlying construction could be safer, I guess. Well, they can use the same materials, simply treat them now. Uh, they are fire resistant, fire retardant. They have fire detectors. And as somebody said, we can put in sprinklers. But if, if you've, anyone who spent time in Europe knows that getting them to change things, good luck. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's only in the last 20 some years that there are buildings within the city of Paris that do not have Mansard roofs. And how old is Paris? So <clears throat> I think I personally love the church. I'd been there a number of times before. Uh, back when I was a photographer and I hope they do try to restore it as closely as possible to its original form. But material science is so greatly improved, there's a way to maintain the traditional form and yet use things that are safer and systems that are safer. I mean, it was, if you and any fire inspector would have gone mad seeing timber that had dried for a thousand years. Well, yeah, six <laughs> centuries at least. That's, I mean, talk about fire hazard, but I mean, the, the example is possible. So, but maintain it. That's one of the things I've always appreciated about Europe. I, I talk to people in New York or even in Barbados, <clears throat> and they love to tear down things and build new ones. And Stephen and I have just been to six and 800 year old buildings that have a peak with glass and chrome inside of the arched doorway. So you have this six or 800 year old building and it's firm, it's in good shape. And yet inside of it, keeping the original architecture, you have these, there's a way to do both. I, 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 that's one of the things I love about traveling around Europe is that respect for the past. So be curious to see how they handle it. I was just in Paris in April and, and went to the, uh, see what the, how they were doing Notre Dame. And it's, it's a huge operation. And they're moving pretty quickly, I think, with it. I think uh, quicker than people thought. But it looks like it's going to stay the same as it was. It looks pretty much that they're they're restoring it. They're not they're not making it uh, Notre Dame in the twenty first century. Mm -hmm. They haven't let IMP get involved. <laughs> Pierre, you have your hand up. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I hope my English will make it. I, I want to, uh, to say hello first, because it's the first time I, I join you. Now, the, the points I want to make, these, these new tools that we receive, and I mean, I, 
when when you you mentioned the word Photoshop, to me it was already artificial intelligence. If I go further back, automated uh, metering exposure, autofocus, there are all kinds of helps that came one after each other that replace our basic abilities. Now, to me, all these, they do not replace a basic ID. If I don't have the ID, I, 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 I will not go to, I, I see the movie industry, which is riddled with high hand effects. If the script is not good, it's poor movies. And I, I see the, the same thing will occur. I, I doubt that with uh, without good IDs, you will not get anywhere. I see the, the, the pictures of Vivian Mayer. She was not using any kind of artificial intelligence. Uh, it's a long time I haven't seen such good pictures. Uh, Stephen Wilkes, or the, the day tonight, I mean, it's, it's an ID first. And then, I mean, you can enhance it, but, but you need the ID first. That, that were, were my points. And the last ones I, I wanted to make is everybody likes some tools or not. Some people like to, to kill a deer with a one shot gun. Some people like Tarantino you will, will use a machine gun. Everybody is his way of doing things and getting pleasure out of it, which is part of it. And I, I had one last thing I, I thought about was honesty. If a picture makes it to a jury and the guy has told that he was using some tools, and the, 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 the rules are made that it's OK. I, I see no, no issue with that. Or we create new categories for contests. I was to make the, the, the last stuff about, you know, um, with a, a French photographer, Duano, we choose to call himself the, the king of the instant photograph. And then he had, a, um, he had to face um, a lawsuit because he was paying actors to make his photos. So to me, that's, that's the point. He was not being honest to say how we did the, the pictures. So as long as these people use these tools, but make it clear that they use it, I see no issue. Yeah, I'm sorry, it took this... a long time. I'm, I yeah. apologize. No, that's great. In the case of this one in Colorado, even though he mentioned in the entry that he used the AI tools, I don't know if people even understood that you know, the judges or the jury, whoever, you know, was judging the contest might not have even understood what he meant by that. Yeah, it could be. And it would have been different if he en enhanced it or did something else himself with it, with his hand, but he didn't. He just entered what the machine did. What, you know, he put in the words and it was whatever the machine put out is what he entered. Didn't the article also say something about, um... Oh, I lost my train of thought now. Oh yeah, having a category for that type of art, because I know a lot. I don't know if I read that in, in your your particular article, John, or if I read it somewhere else. But I think that's a pretty good idea. That way, photographers won't get mad, and artists won't get mad, and you know all these other. Let me ask this. <clears throat> Bear with me, because I, I have difficulty speaking now. The, the ultimate goal of every artist, I don't care whether an, you're an artist with music or sculpting or pottery or rug making or photography, the ultimate goal is the end product. Nobody looking at our art really gives a damn how you made it, if they like it. If they don't like it, it, that's another story. But if they like it, they don't care if you made it with a, a brownie Hawkeye camera or you made it with, with a, a, a bunch of sticks. Art is art and should only be judged by the final product you produce. I really don't care whether somebody decides AI is the way to go or uh, they're gonna hire some 80 year old guy to take the photograph uh, or the drawing or the painting or uh, Grandma Moses or, or, or whoever. 
the bottom line is if they like the final product, that's all that matters. Not the tool, not the tool used that, that help the artist conceive the image or to, to have the intellect to present the image to the public. Who cares? Well, let's hear from Eric. He's got his hand up there. Well, I want to clarify my position, you know, what Jeff was uh, talking about with, during Stephen Johnson's discussion. Um, I've been in the computer industry for many years. I've seen the earlier adoption of computer art, computer video, and, and a lot of it back then was rudimentary, you know, it's okay. But now with this AI, you put in phrases or, or words to kind of spawn the idea of what AI, AI is going to spawn the image. And to me, it seems like that's taking the creativity out of a human being. And, and I guess maybe since I was in the computer industry for a long time, I want to get my humanity back and not have a computer show me, you know, well, here's the image I think you should do. You know, or is pleasant with the words that he gave me. So it's just that's what bothers me with this whole AI stuff. Plus, um, I mean, who who's going to pick up the reward at uh, you know, in Colorado? You know, when they you know give out the awards, is the machine going to go up there and pick it out? And and if you and also I'm you know, thinking back uh, just comical. Uh, Max Hendrum, if you remember him, he a lot of people thought he was an AI figure, uh, computer generated uh, thing, but it was a guy in a plastic suit. Jim, did you want to tag on to what Michael was saying? Hey, yeah, uh, it occurred to me while Jeff was talking and Michael was talking and Jack was talking. Many of the folks here are judges in various photo contests. As a judge, would you rather judge a work created by a person or a work created by an AI? Whatever you consider that to me. Let, let me answer that real quick. <clears throat> when I was asked to put on the very first show of the Explorers of Light, <clears throat> the argument against me doing what I wanted to do was that they're all women. The first show I did was 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 Bortnik, Sarah Moon, Sheila Metzner, and Joyce Tennyson. They said, they're all women. I said, so what? When you look at an image, I never, ever, ever saw any genitalia hanging from the bottom of that picture. It's an image. I don't care, you know. Uh, you know, it. it, it You've really not seen can't... Greg Garman's photographs. Yeah. So what? But they're not hanging. They're 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 solidly placed placed <laughs> inside the, the 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 parameters of the of the frame. <laughs> now, if he would to if he was to do something interesting, like you know hang something from the bottom of it, he could, he could actually hang anything he wanted. But no image in the history of, of the world, the, the, the visual world, has ever had, the, had an image on a wall with something hanging from it where you could, you could identify whether a, a man or a woman created that image. Now I know what my next work will look like. Yes. <laughs> yes. My, but but I'm going to copyright. I'm going to trademark that idea. Or no, I can't trademark an idea. <laughs> no, you can't. And you can't copyright an idea. My Michael, when you yes. get your ears back on, Michael, I I agree with what you say about art is what what people see, and and that's what it is. I agree with that whole um, uh, philosophy, but. When you start talking about this, the AI generated images, there's a difference there. And, and yeah, they could stand on their own if you want, but they're public domain. You, nobody owns them. 
you can create it. You don't own it. You have no right to it. So think well, about minute, people like but Arnold Jack, Newman. But Jack, doesn't somebody have to program the computer? Uh, so who so who owns the copyright? You who created the image or the person who wrote the program? So it, my, my it, question, that's not so going to hold up. So, so my next logical question is this. If logical? I have this I got to see. <laughs> all right. when, when, when I have images that I want to put into uh, a, a website, I don't write the program for the, I don't write the code for the, for the, for the website. The program but that's not the going. image, but that's not, but that's not the image itself. You're, you're doing something with the image, just like, just like when you go to Facebook and you upload something, they ask for um, rights to the image so that they can put it on the multiple servers. So, if they so didn't when I have the, that, when Facebook I wouldn't the, work. When I, when I make the image with my camera, right? I'm taking something that's visually in front of me, right? And it comes into the it comes into the lens, and onto the uh, sensor recording surface recording. Yeah, yeah. And something yeah, yeah. in the camera is converting all of what I see visually into ones and zeros. Well, yeah, but it has it, a lot you're... to do with what you see. Right. I mean, yeah. and, and how you control it. This has been judged in the courts quite a bit that that um, what you're doing and the choices that you are making are creating the image that it's not being done mechanically, as opposed to one of the things that's interesting that can't be copyrighted. If you're a carpenter and you can make a really good joint uh, in, in uh, a drawer or a piece well, of furniture, this kind of that's not copyrightable. Uh, that's not copyrightable either. Oh, but okay. it's it's you, it's a real sticky stu subject to start going into. But it it's still it's, try and keep it at the very very basics. Why there has we... to be human direction or inter intervention. It has to be the product of of human intellect, and the tools you use doesn't matter. But if you're doing a computer generated image where you're just putting in words and the computer is making all the decisions, then that's not copyrightable. Well, but wait a minute. But somebody has to sit there and intellectually think of the words to put into the, the computer. Not so the computer, no. It, it, it's the, the function of AI, artificial intelligence. It, it kind of learns on itself. There's no person that going, oh, if the person asks this question, I'm going to generate this. The the, the computer is, you know, it constantly. Yep. But, adapting to but there, the there has to be what's... some sort of cue. In other words, if I say if I say the word duty, or if I if I say the word crap, or if I say the word shit, it will look up for the internet. To aren't they see all the same? Aren't they all the same? <laughs> no. What what happens is the computer. If you, if you put in something very specific, I want a blue tinted image, a very detailed uh, cave paint, you know, done in this particular style. Every time you enter that same command into the computer, you will get a different result. And some people say they keep a string of words uh, always on their computer of what they use, and they'll use the same one over and over again just to see what the computer will do. So while you're putting in the words, the computer is making all the decisions. You don't have any creative uh, control over it. So you could put in the same, uh, oh, I, want oh, Mike, I want Mike Mueller on the beach, let's say. Um, it'll come up with, with different versions. And if yeah, you wait enter it in again, it'll come wait up with more different versions. Wait a minute, but, but you, okay. My, Mike Newler is, is a unique entity. That's but to when say you, the least. You can say that, yeah. <laughs> but when you say a beach, there are an, I was going to say an infinite number of beaches in the world. And that computer could be jostling around millions, if not trillions, of different beaches. But there's only one Mike Newler, thank God. <clears throat> no, but it'll 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 um, reinterpret you in different ways. Somebody just did this with with um, uh, what's his name Oliver, um, who's who's the late the the late night uh, uh, once a week on on uh, TV. No, on, on cable. Yeah, this yeah, week the, tonight, the, the English guy. Uh, yeah, this week tonight. Somebody he he did a program that you have to see on AI, where 
if somebody took his name and did it with cabbages and they did all these different things of him and cabbages it's the most hilarious bit you've ever seen but every time they put it in it created something different with him so it's it, it you can argue it all you want michael but the law basically is still it can't be copyrighted the law, it's, it's machine the, the law is right now as it stands today unless something changes a image produced solely by uh one of these artificial intelligence uh, services is not copyrightable well i have a, a question on that what jeff was talking about convolve or how there's a random seed button the creator is not really creating anything when he hits that random seed button can that be copyrighted you're muted jack well, you can't hear you you're yeah. oh i'm sorry there you go. <laughs> and oh, then i'll get weird. to joseph um no if you're working on your original image then you're working on derivatives now if you put your image into one of these ais and had it manipulate manipulate your original image then you could probably claim that it's it's just a derivative of your original image i mean i mean these are things that are going to be discussed in the courts quite a bit but all the yeah. stuff um that will alter like infinite tools is another one jeff i don't know if you've seen their stuff yeah. um where they will do retouching they will do textures they will do uh color um uh, uh you know coding color manipulation on it uh, by just hitting a button and it'll pick different parameters but the original is still yours so these are all derivatives joe what did you have you had your hand up michael you're muted yeah you know some of Copy, this the copyright laws in in the united states have to be changed there's no doubt about it they're so antiquated they're so behind the times uh they haven't caught up to the, the technologies oh, that we're currently using. Good fucking luck with that. We can't even let women uh, control their own bodies. Yeah. But, well, uh, there you go. But John, John called on um, Joe. Joe, so you're going to get muted again, Mike. By who? Jeff's co-host in here. Okay, so. You know, I, I've got a couple of the copyright issues aside. A uh, couple of things. Number one, I think that uh, my understanding of this process right now is that you enter a bunch of keywords and computer interprets that and creates an image. Uh, keywording can be very creative. Uh, so I, I still don't, don't understand the uh, if this is something more spontaneous or is it just a tool? And speaking of tools, people, you know, will take a look at a photograph. Uh, I'm sure you've all had this experience. Somebody looks at one of your pictures and says, what camera did you use to make that? My response is, who cares? What was your exposure? I don't remember. Who cares, right? Uh, these are questions that, that I don't care to get involved in or, 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 to, or to answer because it's immaterial. Uh, it's like Mike said, you can make a great photograph with a pinhole camera as with a, with a, a mirrorless, you know, mirrorless camera or a DSLR or, or, or a Nikon F with, with, with Kodachrome. It, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's what the image is. But when it comes down to the final result here, uh, the big question is this, is this controversy has started because somebody entered a photography contest with an artificially artificial intelligence created image. Is it a photograph? That, that's really the, the first question you have to ask. Actually, I don't even think this was a photography. I think this was a general art contest. So it's an it art was, contest? It was a fine art piece that he entered. Well, uh, when, you have, when, when, you have fine, when you have a fine art contest, don't you have to have specify what medium it is and what, uh, you know, there are, there are categories. You just can't say we're having an art contest and everybody submits what they want. Somebody submits an oil painting, I submit a photograph. Somebody yeah. with a computer submits an AI image, or what? What are we talking about? I'm going to look at the original. Talking about somebody taking, they're talking about somebody taking a banana and sticking it on a wall with some duct tape and getting a hundred thousand dollars for the <laughs> freaking thing. And then he's getting sued because someone else already did it before him. 
Well, no, he was getting sued <laughs> because the damn banana went black and fell off the wall. And anyway, Eric, you still had your hand up. Is that from before? Or do you have more to add? I, I just had a question. I yeah. should say, I'm going to follow up uh, Jim's question with another question. You know, would you enter in a photo contest as it's a, uh, the judge is an AI, you know, entity and have the AI judge your photograph? That's a good question. That's interesting. <laughs> I love it. You know, art is so subjective anyway. I mean, you know, I can make but, a picture. One person sees it, says, oh, man, that's gorgeous. And they blow all kinds of smoke up my ass. Somebody else sees it and says, that's a piece of crap. Why would you even bother? Well, right? but I, who knows? Here's an interesting question. So the AI to create the art is doing some sort of, some sort of random processing of all the art in its data set. So an AI judge, do we want it to sort of randomly walk through art and say, well, this is good. Your art is sort of like this. It's sort of like the Mona Lisa. So you, know, you win. Or do we want it to be a completely objective judge? Well, it could, it could be, you know, it could be not random. It could be where the AI, you know, looks at all the different masterpieces of, of photography and compares it to yours and say, are you up to this level? You know, I mean, you know, are you uh, top of it to get a reward, a, a award for it? Okay, well, let's ask the, the judges problem. here. Let's ask these people who have judged art. Like, for example, take people who are, are very calm and moderate in their obedience. Jack and Jeff, have you ever judged a piece of photographic art the same way? I've I've been in judging things in PPA, and I went through their judging program it, it 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 depends on your visual literacy i found out um different judges will look at things differently and um uh i've judged things um were like i was a new zealand judging a competition there because i was a speaker going and doing that and it was difficult to judge because if i said anything it carried more weight than it should have I mean, judging can be very, very subjective. And I was very careful with what I said because, because you were the, the guest guy from another country or whatever it was, the, the speaker. Uh, if, if I said something about a picture then everybody sort of like fell into place and that wasn't the correct way to judge it. You, you need judges that are independently minded who have a good visual literacy of photography. Sometimes I find that some judges don't. Their PPAs had that problem where sometimes it's a very, very narrow set. And when they see something new, it, it upsets the whole process. Um, Bob has had his hand up. Bob Kiss. Well, uh, wait, I get, the, I get to do my answer because he asked both <laughs> you and I. Okay. I'm not in the least bit judgmental. Ah, 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 oh, shit. Oh, Oh, okay. Jesus Christ. Now I am great, by the way, judgmental. That's good room. Um, <laughs> now, you have an AI process. And let me give you an example of something that I just thought of while I was here. Uh, 20 some years ago, I dropped the ball. There was this woman sitting in this crowded church woman's thing outside of this beautiful old sandstone church in, uh, down from Pienza where the original Pope Pius II was, was uh, baptized. And I didn't know, I didn't feel confident enough, speaking Italian in those days, to ask her permission to photograph her, so I didn't. And that image has haunted me for 20-some years. So we go back there, yeah, in church. Now, there's not a good chance at 71 years old, I'm been, gonna be back to Italy real soon. So the chance of getting that picture it's here, but it's never been anywhere else. So, my question, of course, I can photograph a woman in a black outfit. I can go into Photoshop. Yes, yeah, I'm going to pick her up, put her down. Concise. Well, okay. But what about the idea that you don't just say um, flowery foreground, all lavender, the way that woman probably did in the image that won? What if you say something, and then you look and you go, and then how about yellow in these areas advancing and how about some dark black behind the flowers receding when does it become your process now i'm not asking about copyright jack until they change the law that's a moot point when 
when have you influenced the process enough for it to become your art? I think that is an interesting question. Of course, if you put in four or five or 10 words and you wait for what it spits out, that's really not yours. If you modify and modify because you have a vision, when does it start to become yours? I think that's an important question for future use of this tool. I, I think you're right, Bob. It, 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 it comes down to also when you produce a motion picture. Uh, a writer created the script, uh, a director of photography gave it its look, the actors in it give it another life, but it's always credited to the director. No, that's not true. The motion picture is a joint co-authorship. Now, oddly enough, the copyright ownership in motion pictures generally rests in the producers, not the directors, not the writers. Yeah. But it, uh, a, it's a collaborative copyright. And that is something that I haven't, uh, as an individual photographer, dealt with. Although um, Glenn Wexler, I don't know if anybody doesn't know Glenn. Glenn is a LA um, photographer, commercial photographer that used to do a lot of, um, uh, well, digital manipulation, but also photo manipulation uh, for record covers. And he and I got into this big argument about what is a collaborative uh, co-authorship and what is a individual um, sole copyright. And two or more people can collaborate to create a copyright. And it, in the copyright law, it's um, uh, inseparable. I mean, it's like, um, you know, uh, real estate property has infinite rights that you can kind of sell off. And the same thing with intellectual property. Two or more people can agree. Now, that is the key. You have to agree to collaborate and share uh, um, copyright ownership. But that motion picture is a collaborative art. And the copyright, well, in terms of commercial film, the copyright is generally considered owned by the uh, uh, producer. But in, in fine, art, um, um, uh, fine art movies, it's generally owned by the, the collaborate uh, group. There's, there's one other thing though, Jeff. Um, sometimes if it's based on a book or, or somebody's, something somebody wrote, the motion picture could be a derivative of that. And the original writer still owns the uh, copyright. In fact, that case is going on now with Top Gun um, movie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the heirs of the original writer of the article uh, that the, the original movie was based on um, but it's going to be interesting because the argument yeah. that the new movie he gave has them the actually rights. is pretty good. He gave them the rights for 20 years, and now 22, year, 22 years later, they make another film. And that's why that's the basis of his suit. But uh, Yeah, but when, they're, they're when you talk about copyright, actually... When you talk about copyright, I, I think something is very interesting. Uh, and we talk about, you know, can, can the law be changed? Uh, should the law be changed? I remember uh, reading something, I don't remember where, uh, many years ago uh, about copyright law and the main driver uh, seemed to be uh, the Walt Disney Company because their copyright on the original Mickey Mouse cartoons was going to expire. And they lobbied heavily to have the law changed to extend the copyright for their benefit because otherwise anybody could make a Mickey Mouse film. So to what end do we anticipate uh, corporate entities uh, trying to affect the copyright law to, uh, to cover these artificial intelligence images? I mean, who's, who's gonna be the copyright holder? Jeff says, uh, and, and, I, and it's right, because I, I watch a lot of movies, you always see at the end, it says, you know, for the purposes of uh, copyright, this, this is made by uh, Universal Pictures, you know, subject to the, right? So. So the studio's claiming the copyright. The director gets the Oscar, right? The writer might get an Oscar, but the studio owns the film. Uh, so I, I foresee that, you know, and we, this goes back to something else. You know, we talked about 
who's going to be put out of work by this artificial intelligence image making? Uh, I could see corporations trying to, you know, corporate interests trying to change the laws so that these images can be copyrighted, even though there's no human hand, so to speak. I don't know if they'll be able to do that, but you were referring to the Sonny Bono Term Extension Act. Sonny Bono was the one who, who his name is on it. Uh, and we benefited from it. Uh, no, we well, did. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, we benefited greatly because now it's copyright is your lifetime plus 70 years. Exactly. Um, you know, and, and so, but but Disney has lost, um, are losing the rights to Steamboat Willie. As the years go on, they'll lose more and more copyrights, right. but they're losing it to the Steamboat Willie um, one. But they've done something very interesting that, the, that, that legal experts are looking at. They're producing live action movies of some of the films that are being that are going to be falling into uh, public domain in the next few years, like say Snow White. Um, right. And now what they're saying is the elements in those films that if you want to use the old ones, you have to be very careful not to use the stuff that's in the new live action themes, um, and because those are going to be new works, and they think that's how they're going to try and perpetuate their copyrights. If it works, nobody knows yet, but it's. It's going to get really, really sticky, but their their old cartoons are going to fall into public domain. We we've got to leave. We have a, a restaurant reservation we have to get to. Save some to take you for us. To take you with us, but uh, I don't know. You can hear before the end of dinner. Arrivederci. <laughs> <laughs> Ciao. Ciao. Thanks for joining us. Anyway, I looked at the article again, and the piece that we were talking about originally was entered in the digital art category and was printed on canvas, I believe. That means anything to anyone. What is yeah, so there's what's, the category. What's the difference, the medium it was printed on? I don't know. I'm just saying what's in the article about how it was presented to the, to the fair that it won the, the prize in. What was the price that it won? Uh, let's see. He won in the digital art category, a work called the Dopper Space Shell, printed on canvas or submission. Uh, let's see, classical figures in a radiant landscape. He did not paint it. Software Mid Journey did using his prompts. Um, let's see if it says what, what he actually won. A, a ribbon. I don't know if there's anything other than a ribbon that went along with it <laughs> <laughs> you know a, a ribbon you know or i thought maybe a, a, a lens <laughs> dragging rights and that's generated 62 minutes of discussion <laughs> right <laughs> just right. us alone i mean twitter's been going crazy with this yeah no, i can hey, see this i can see this escalating you know to, mm -hmm. to a corporate level some of the biggest, you know, especially when you talk about copyright, some of the biggest entities that are involved in protecting their copyrights are companies like Disney and Microsoft. Uh, and sometimes to the detriment of individual artists like us. Although we have benefited, as Jack mentioned, from some of their, from some of their uh, uh, efforts. But uh, I just wonder where all this goes. I gotta go. I gotta meet somebody. Yeah, well <laughs> It's been nice Thank to everyone see all for joining you. us today. It's been, and, uh, been good to see, see everyone too. again. Thanks Bye -bye. for your input, especially David and Eric to, to talk about the past history of the artificial intelligence used in computers and the like. Thank you all.